What's going on, YouTube? It's CBH here, bringing you a deck tech deck with tech. Gordon Hunt, a.k.a. Gorby, of course, of Team Peach. What's up, guys? What do you got? Let's see. Today we have a deck tech for the Water Dark Nature, or Nature Dark Water, as I have it organized here, mm -hmm. uh, that I've been using the past couple weeks. Yeah, if you're on Pojo.com, you might have seen him post this and talk about it. Yeah, there. I've talked about it there on Pojo. You saw the, like, I guess I'm, I'm going to call it the beta version. Uh, on CVH's channel, probably what, like three or four No, weeks I actually ago. never got around to posting that. So oh, you never did. Here okay, so go. here we go. What's up, Earth Power? Uh, Alright, so there. let's get an overview of the deck real quick. There you can see the list, pause the video to get the, the entire thing. thing. So let's go, you just tell us what you think is interesting about it. Just start somewhere. Uh, yeah. Well, the inspiration for the deck was really the nature section. Uh, just mostly because of Flame Spike. Mm -hmm. So you got some bait there. Yeah. Uh, pretty standard bait lineup. Uh, three Pickleback, three Bronze Arm. Like, this is actually probably my favorite play of the deck. Turn five. Turn four, spike. turn five Flame Spike. Like, it just, it happens pretty consistently for me. Uh, it's really solid, and Flame Spike coming down two turns before things like Pit become live is always nice. Mm -hmm. um, Fear Fang has been something that Carl and I have been testing. Uh, I like it so far. Uh, it's just a nice kind of answer to Seneschal and things like that on turn three. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I don't have to bump with a Razor Hide or anything like that, I still keep my field presence. Yeah, for sure. And the spells, you got one Reap and Sow and three Tendrils. One Reap and Sow, three Tendrils. Just because, like I said, that turn four into turn six play, mm -hmm. or turn five play, is kind of important for me. You can go Fear Fang, Reap and Sow, Flame yeah, Spike. Fear Fang, Reap and Sow, Flame exactly. But the three Tendril is something that people have been asking me questions about. Um... I really, really like it, guys. I mean, there are the situations where I'm eating a minus from playing the Tendril are few and far between. Just because early game, this is one of the best answers that this game has to Blurple right now, mm -hmm. which is such a dominant deck. And uh, something that I've kind of been trying to work on is holding the Tendril, uh, just because generally, like, if you watch some of the matches, I'll end up putting it in mana early game. But that's when I have a play like Seneschal Rasalka or something like yeah, that, yeah. Seneschal Follow-Up where that's a better, like, momentum builder than trying to hold on to the Tendril Grasp. And you're hoping you're not going to have to Tendril Grasp later. Exactly. On your Seneschal, so mm -hmm. you can keep your momentum rolling. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty much the nature section. And we move on to Darkness. You have the standard removal, of course. Pit standard removal, yeah. I mean, these need to be... If you're playing Darkness, you, these need to be played at threes right now. Yeah, not a whole lot to say about them. There's really not. Too good. And then, of course, you have the, the Chimera, Chimera lineup. lineup. Uh, something that I've been tinkering with, I like it. And this really separates your deck apart from most Water Dark Nature builds. Yeah, like, you'll see decks like, um, I think Channel Kajudo Master came up with that original, like, transmission. Yeah, just focusing on Cyberlords and Beastkin. The Cyberlord Beastkin. Yeah. I took a different approach. And to then you it. have other, like, Water Dark Nature control decks that just forego evolutions altogether. Exactly. Uh, I tried to make it more uh, Chimera Beastkin-centric because I really like Hydra Medusa. It's, it's a game changer. one of the definite power cards of, this, of the game right now. And the bait is just so playable. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gloom Hollow, Chum Blocks for Days... And Screeching is actually a really great answer to uh, Blurple right now. Yeah. Getting rid of that early stuff. It's kind of easy to play around. Like, if my opponent's familiar with the list, mm -hmm. Screeching's kind of easy to play around. It's still too good not to run. But, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. something that you just and need to... it punishes to... people who overextend. Exactly. Yeah, the potential for the value there, along with the fact that it's like it gets more than, like, Bad Breath or whatever, and then, like, if you run Giga Stan, it's just another thing that can get Barrage, Ten Ruled, etc. Pretty so, much. Yeah. At the very least, even if you play a raw screeching, it has to have, like, bone blades to get rid of it, pretty much. You know, exactly. Or heat seeker. The Dark Scare Adorable is something I'm thinking about tinkering with. Uh, I don't use it that much. I generally set up, like, the Flame Spike play instead. Uh, I still really like it. Uh, I'm thinking about tinkering with the Darkness section in general. Like, the Chimera engine's still really good for the deck, but Medusa hasn't been coming down as often recently, just as I've, like, learned to play the deck and how it flows better. Yeah. So, there may be an update to this, but right now I still really like it. Uh, it's super solid. It lets me play a con more control-based early game if I have to. And that's really all there is to say Let's about the water the section. Yeah. Yeah. The water section, standard. Yeah, you got three three Seneschal, Seneschal three Logos, three, three Rusalka, and three Refi. Yeah. Um, the Refi is mostly for early game decks that aren't Blurple. Yeah, it gives you six blockers and... Refi can die to screeching, but you know it's still it's still too good because you got the random mono rush decks, you got the random just rush decks in general. You know exactly, but like you know water fire nature refi is a really solid choice against card mm -hmm. decks like that, and it's that late game chum block that I can, that I need, uh, just because in the early game this deck if it gets thrown off a little bit it can sort of struggle to stabilize again. Yeah, and refi it's not the best card for that, but it definitely helps. 
And I explained the choice of the two crystal memories because I noticed I personally like crystal memory a lot in here, but you're running it over Gigahorn charge, which might throw someone off. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, well, Gigahorn, and you might, you know, Gigahorn's good. I mean, I have six targets for it. You know, yeah. that warrants, you know, one, maybe two Gigahorns. But in general, when I was playing Gigahorn Charger, because I was at this, at, uh, in the earlier phases of this deck, mm -hmm. I was playing Gigahorn, but when I was playing it, it was kind of unnecessary. Like, I'd just be searching out an evolution or something like that when I either already had one in hand or when it wasn't, like, a good time to do it. Or yeah, The deck is streamlined, and you do draw a lot, and memory gets a pass because it can search out anything. Like, it, I see you search exactly. for Tendrils sometimes, Terra Pit. Like, that's something yeah. the deck needed was, like, a toolboxy <laughs> element that lets me get spells if I need to, get bait if I have an evolution in hand, uh, get removal, whatever. And Crystal Memory is one of my favorite cards to see in Shields, for oh, real. Oh, yeah, for real. Because you can just set up the perfect play to count on whatever they've done. Mm-hmm. It's just super depressing. It's, just, it's super solid. I like it, at least in this deck, I like it better than Gigahorn. Yeah, all of a sudden... Because like, I filter through the deck fast enough that I don't need Gigahorn to search evolutions and power cards like these three, or these four. Yeah. But being able to toolbox it up, if I need a Terra Pit, if I need Tendril Grasp, if I need a Blocker, Crystal Memory solves that problem for me. Exactly. And every every time you go in and do break shields, you always think in the back of your head, what's the worst possible case scenario that they could have after I break these shields? Mm -hmm. And when you hit a crystal memory, that worst case scenario has just become reality. Like, mm -hmm. they will have whatever you wished they didn't have. And Pretty it's, much. It's a shame, but <laughs> memory is super cool. So, yeah. Yeah. How many but cards I, does this come out to? Uh, it's 40 car 42 cards, 42. excuse me. Each section is 14 cards. Random yeah. uh, number games right there? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Balancing out the color pie? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> a mana curve for 4.9. Of course, <laughs> of course, naturally. But, uh, <laughs> like, the general idea behind the deck was optimizing that turn three into turn four play for me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, super solid. They give exactly. a ton of really good turn four plays. Exactly. Yeah, just like Seneschal, Fear Fang, Logos, followed up with either Rusaka or the Bronze Arm Tribe. And or Bone Blades or Screeching. Or, or even Reaping Cells are great turn four play. Exactly. So that, that was the general idea behind building the deck. And uh, I feel like I've optimized that pretty well. Like I said, I All might right. be tinkering with this just a little bit. Uh, because Puppet is really good, and it helps me deal with uh, answers that my opponent has in hand. Like, if I'm reading the Medusa, being able to turn four Bronze Arm into turn five Puppet is always nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely thinking about messing with that. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, so I guess that's the deck. Uh, leave a like, deck. comment, you know, tell Google what your thoughts are. Tell and, me. Um, I'm always happy to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, for sure. Follow me on Twitter, at Gnarly Gorby, and be sure to check out Pojo.com. I am writing for Card of the Day there. Indeed, good reviews, really solid reviews. Yeah, I try to be as competitively minded as possible when I go in mm -hmm. to these reviews, thinking how this card is best utilized in the current meta. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for good analysis on that, I've got that covered. As does Andy Chris, he writes there too. Yeah, Andy Chris, uh, that one guy, Rajinku. Rajinku does good. pretty good. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few good writers on that site, so mm -hmm. that's good to see. Alright, so um, yeah, pretty much uh, leave a like and all that, and I'll see you for the next video, YouTube. Peach. Peach. Gotta turn off. Oh, God.